How can meditation change lives? <clears throat> well, um, meditation can, uh, can radically change our lives. It certainly changed mine um, in amazing ways that I could never have imagined. So that's the reason I'm very passionate about, about meditation and teaching meditation. <clears throat> and um, of course, uh, culturally now, you know, in the, in, you could say in the alternative postmodern um, world, uh, meditation and yoga have become very popular and very common, right? I mean, you find it everywhere. So obviously that's, that's, that's a good thing, yeah? So these things are becoming more widely, widely known and accepted. And, um, and more recently, I would say in the last two, two decades or so, um, meditation has, has even become more um, common in, in the modern world, you know, in the, in, let's say, the, the not-so-alternative modern world, uh, largely in, under the name of mindfulness. <clears throat> and um, I, mindful, this mindfulness is often being taught in ways that um, it's all about helping people relieve themselves from stress, you know, learning how to focus better, you know, it's not necessarily connected to any spiritual um, context. Um, but of course, you know, it's still having a positive impact. So, <clears throat> so there's, you know, we're living in a time where meditation and mindfulness are becoming more and more popular and more and more um, accepted. You know. It's good. That's good. Obviously, that's 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 only good, can, can only be good. But then um, if we look a little bit closer, um, we'll see that people are meditating for different reasons. And also there are many different forms of meditation, <clears throat> many, many different approaches. So um, many people are, are are interested in meditation basically because they want to feel better. You know, we most people, especially who are living in cities, are living very stressful, busy lives. You know, as we get as we get more and more uh, technology, you know, our lives just speed up. Everything's just speeding up, and uh, people are overloaded. You know, by information and all kinds of uh, demands. So it's very understandable that people are attracted to meditation to feel better, to, to learn how to relax, because most people are, are suffering, you could say, from um, chronic uh, tension, existential tension, you know, like, you know. And even these days, people, a lot of people have trouble sleeping. They can't, they, even if they lie down, they find it very hard to just let go and relax. So, so many people are attracted to meditation and mindfulness uh, techniques, you know. And there's many different forms, you know, follow, following uh, some kind of guidance or music or focusing on something. Um, so these are, again, it's all positive, it's all good stuff. Um, but it's a very different motivation um, than wanting to wake up spiritually. So there's a, there's a fundamental difference between wanting to feel better, feel good, feel relaxed. How is the difference? Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a fundamental difference from just wanting to feel good and feel better and feel relaxed or learn how to focus my mind. And waking up spiritually, right? So why is that such a big difference? Because if we're meditating just to basically feel better in some way to improve ourselves, then um, 
we're not really uh, interested in questioning very deeply, or maybe at all, who we really are. You see, we, we you know we just we are who we are, and we want to feel better, or we want to we want to experience have less stress in our lives or whatever. Do you see? So that's very different from that's a very different motivation from the big questions, the big spiritual questions, really, which are, who am I really? Am I really the person that I think I am? You know, that, that I've been told that I am, you know? Am, am I just this body and, and this mind, or is there more to who I am than that, right? So, and also the other big spiritual question is, well, well why, why am I here? What's the meaning of this? What's the purpose of life, you see? So most people uh, spend their whole lives avoiding those questions, you see? Because everybody's very busy being who they th presume or think they are. And um, people are often afraid, you know, to slow down enough or to step out of their you know, their, um, their movie, let's say. So you can, you can think of the metaphor of a movie, right? So we're, we're in the world, we're in the, this movie. So when you start to wake up spiritually, it's when you actually step out. And instead of being in the movie, you're like, what is this? And who is this character that I apparently am? And is this really me? You see? You with me? <laughs> so, um, while of course um, some of the benefits of, of meditation will be, you know, relaxation and maybe a little bit more uh, ability to deal with your mi the mind and emotions. Do you see? Um, they can, uh, they can, you might be experience more clarity, for example, that might help you navigate more. Um, precisely and creatively through your life, right? So these are all good things. But the, the, if you become interested in spiritual awakening, in enlightenment, spiritual enlightenment for real, it means you, you, you start to question, well, who is, this, who is this I that wants to feel better? Do you see what I mean? Or who... What is this life when I think of my life? Well, well what is that? Who is that? Um, do you see? But so, sometimes, yeah. sorry, you can choose sometimes because in my example, I will, uh, in the past, I go to a, a therapy mm -hmm. to help my son. Mm -hmm. And uh, the person do with me my first meditation, mm -hmm. and I feel that a part of me wake up. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just a scientific mind, mm -hmm. and uh, that day some 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 Something part opened. of me uh, wake up, mm -hmm. and I don't choose. I think I don't choose, or I choose. Mm -hmm. Well. Uh, what we can call a spiritual awakening can happen spontaneously, like that, right? It could happen spontaneously um, in any moment. You might be walk, taking a walk in the woods, for example, or, or, or one day just, you know, for, for no apparent, apparent reason, something wakes up right? and you become aware that who I really am is... is is something more than just the body mind personality right so these kind of awakenings can, can occur spontaneously and uh, they did with me also when I was a teenager I mean I started meditating before I knew what meditation was I didn't know what it was but I was just attracted to sitting down I would go for a walk in nature and I would just sit down and then I would be sometimes overwhelmed by this peace and stillness and my mind would slow down and even disappear completely and I would lose all track of time and I'd feel so happy and so peaceful and then I'd, then I'd come back and I'd be like, oh, 
oh, I'm late for lunch, you know. And Meditation is uh, to when we want to go see the sea and stay calm watching the sea. Yeah. This is meditation too? Yeah, because when we, when we think about meditation, we usually think of like sitting like this, you know, and, and doing a, a meditation practice. Mm -hmm. right? But what is it, you know, what, why, are, again, I'm going back to the question, why are we meditating? If, if there's a deep um, longing to be free, to be deeply happy, right? To free ourselves from our mind and emotions, all the way that we seem to be tormented by our mind and emotions. Right? This is this is this is the impulse towards spiritual awakening. Right? Is to discover a peace and a depth, a clarity, a freedom that's already here. Yeah. We that we don't have to go looking for it, seeking for it out there in the world of objects and relationships and activities, right? Because even if we find some fulfillment, peace and happiness there, it doesn't last because everything changes, you see? And then, then we're back to feeling something's missing again, you see? So that's, that's um, so even if, if we're only, um, if we're doing anything just to feel better, whether we're taking drugs or we're meditating to feel better, after a while, the, the good feeling will fade away, you see? And then we take the drugs again or we meditate again, you see? Because we're, we're seeking, we're wanting to get something, you see? So the, uh, the deeper, the deeper potential, but, but all the time, you see, what, what is it that we're actually looking for? What are all human beings looking for? All human beings, whether they have some spiritual awareness or none at all, everybody wants to be happy. Everybody is seeking peace and fulfillment. Right? Everybody, whether they're a heroin addict or, or a yogi sitting on the mountain in a cave. That's what everyone's seeking. That's the, the, you could say, the, the driver of the human condition, right? And um, so what, what we could call meditation, what, what I call true meditation, is the discovery that that which we are seeking is already here. Or the, the one who is looking, what, what we are looking for, right, out there, is the one who is looking. You with me? But we are so conditioned, you see, through, through many, for many different reasons, to believe that we are a separate, limited body-mind personality, you see, and that somehow there's, there's and, and at the core of that conviction or, or, or what we call the ego is the sense there's something wrong, there's something missing, you know, and therefore we, we seek, there's that, that we, our attention and our energy goes out, you see, to find, looking for that peace and happiness. So, the true meditation well, that, that I'm interested in and that, that I teach is all about letting go of that movement of seeking. And then if one's willing to do that, all that energy that's going out, which I'm symbolizing by my hands, right? So that, so the, all of our energy and attention is looking for peace, happiness, freedom, fulfillment, right? Looking for love. Right? So as we, as we let go of that movement of wanting, wanting this and not wanting that, we start to sink back into the source of our being, from which all of our attention, and by attention I mean you know, the mind, and our energy arises 
you see, the source of our of our energy and attention, and um, we start to sink back, and then and then uh, we we begin to discover a peace and a happiness and a freedom and a clarity that's always already here. We start to realize, oh, it's it's already here. You see, and it's when I forget that, and when I start to look outside, that I then I suffer. Then I start to suffer because I'm wanting something or resisting something. I want this, I don't want that. You see? So, um, for example, when people, why do people love to go to the beach, you know, or gaze at a sunset or go for a walk in, the, in a forest? It's, it's because in those kind of environments, and there's, you know, there's other possibilities, um, we often um, um, fall into, this is what happens is we, we let go of all our struggles, our, our, far, our fears, our desires, you see, and we spontaneously go, ah, oh, what a beautiful sunset, you see, you see, but, but, but what actually, what actually happens is that there's a letting go of our mind and all our problems and all of everything we're busy with normally and with the help of a beautiful scene you know and obviously nature nature you could say reflects back to us our own fundamental beauty you could say it's not quite the same if you're you know sitting in a middle of a city looking at a, a modern building it's not going to have the same effect maybe <laughs> but uh, so people like, experience these kind of glimpses I call them glimpses of awakening um, everybody does but um, most people don't realize what it is they just think oh that was that was a beautiful experience and they think that the it was the sunset that did it or the trees or you see, and they, they, they and so. But when you start to awaken spiritually, when you when you become interested in these deeper questions of who am I really, and and uh, and I really want to be free from suffering, because you start to realize, well, I'm I'm creating my own suffering. You know, there's there's whatever is difficult in terms of the circumstances of life, right? which we all have to deal with. But so much of our suffering is self-created. And so we, we start to feel a longing to free ourselves from that so we can discover the peace, happiness and joy and freedom that's, that's inherent to our, to our nature. That's why we talk about our true nature or the true self. Right? So... Um, Meditation, as I understand it and as I teach it, you see, it's all about that discovery. It's all about that discovery. And therefore, um, it's not limited to sitting still in a meditate, doing a particular meditation practice, potentially. There's great value in doing a meditation practice, and which I recommend to everyone, and that's that's why I, I teach meditation and love to teach meditation. But if if one um, if one really has a great um, longing to be free, one will find one can find that this kind of disposition um, of meditation is is becomes accessible in one's everyday life. Every second. Potentially, because ultimately what I'm calling true meditation is, is it, it's just another way of describing who we really are. It's our true nature. So we're meditating all the time. And by meditating all the time, I mean just being. Present. Right? Just being present. We're, we're, we're present all the time, aren't we? But sometimes we don't know. Well, that's the thing, you see. We, 
so, the, so in terms of our fundamental experience, our most, our most essential experience of being conscious, I, right, it's always here. I is always here, isn't it? Now, <clears throat> it only appears that we're not present when we don't like what's here now. We're resisting what's here now. This shouldn't be happening. I don't want this. Right? Or we're wanting something that isn't here now. Right? So what I just said is very simple, right? It's very simple. That is the essence of the ego. That is what creates the sense of being a, a separate self that's, that's separate from the, all of life. And that is what creates our suffering, our psychological suffering. I'm not talking about physical pain and stuff that happens that we don't we can't control but in terms of our psychological suffering if you really slow down the slow down the tape you know you start and this is what meditation can help you do because you're just sitting there being right? there's nothing to do and you know and you start to observe and see what arises you know? and you're not moving right? and you start to um, <coughs> to see and recognize that when I want, when I, so when I'm experiencing something like fear, for example, or anger, or there's something happening out there in the world and I don't like it, I don't want it, and I feel it should not be happening, I'm suffering. And I am separate, do you see? Because my, my heart, you could say, is contracted, no. I don't accept this. So then we, 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 we cut us, ourselves off from whatever. And equally, it's really the same thing. If we, and then if, we, then if we, we've, there's desire, so there's fear and avoidance, resistance, or, or it's desire, I need, I want. What is not here now? I need you to give me something that you're not giving me or well, I want I'm meditating so I want to experience love light and bliss that's what I want and it's not happening because my mind's busy so I'm suffering you see because it shouldn't be like this do you see yeah what I feel it's uh, I need to choose things in our day life and you need this ego, elf ego, to relate with the world, or you know, mm -hmm. and and just go to this place or this ego that can relate with people, healthy. Mm -hmm. It's a practice, I think. No? It's what? A practice. A Practical. Practice. A, a practice. practice. A practice. Well, maybe I'll say a little, to answer your question, I'll, I'll just say a little bit about the meditation practice I teach, because it's, re it's related to your question. So um, there's basically two forms of meditation. Right? There's, there's many different techniques, but in, essentially there's two forms. And the most common form of meditation is meditation on an object. Right. So whether the object is a mantra, right? Om Namo Shivaya, Om Namo Shivaya, Om, right? Or maybe it's a candle flame, I'm just looking at that, or it's a cup. <laughs> or, or you're focusing on your third eye, right? Or, or the one that I, I recommend is the most simple, which, or you're focusing on the breath, you're just meditating on the movement of the breath. Right? So. All of the, these different approaches are essentially meditation on one object. And the idea is that when your mind starts to wander off, thinking about the past or the future, then you just come back. You come back. It's like training a dog. Come back. Come back. Yeah? And then eventually, 
if you persist, you know, you'll, 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 you'll become more concentrated and focused and you start to experience this deep peace and really relax very deeply because you're, you're letting go of that distraction, <coughs> right? So that's, that redis that's very useful. That's, that's most of the meditation that people are doing is, is, a, ver is a variation of that, right? So it can be very helpful and very useful, but it will not free you. You will not discover who you truly are as, as awakened being or consciousness by doing a technique, you see, because you are doing something. And, it, <coughs> and even if you achieve a state of great peace and equanimity and even bliss, you know what I mean by bliss, right? Grass of the day of, yeah? Well, then, when you open your eyes and you start walking and talking, it's probably going to fade away, you see? And then it's like, I've lost it, you see? So this is the trap that most, most spiritual seekers get, get caught in this trap. <clears throat> because we're all materialists. We are all materialists. And, um, you know, of course, the vast majority of human beings are, are looking for happiness, peace and fulfillment through material things and then relationships, looking for the perfect woman or the perfect man and that's another big illusion, right? And, you know, and then they're looking for it in, you know, certain activities they love or whatever, right? And then, but then some, then we, some people get interested in spiritual life and they realize, no, 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 you can, that's not where you have to, we have to, we have to start looking inward than outward, right? But then usually what happens is that same materialistic impulse, we bring it into the, the spiritual path, and we're wanting to have spiritual experiences of love and light and bliss, you see? And then we might do certain practices, like meditation on an object, and experience higher and deeper states of consciousness, you see? But then we get attached to them. And then we get attached to the technique. This is very common. And if you're attached, you're not free. You see? So the, the, the second form of meditation, and this is a, usually in the traditions, the spiritual traditions, they, people would become established in the first form first, some, some, some kind of practice of meditation with an object because that does help you gain a certain kind of stability and equanimity and ease of being. 